Hello students, in this video we'll see how to iteratively use the chain rule for a function of several variables. Let's suppose we have w, which is f of x and y, and the function is x and y, so x over here is going to be a function a of s and t, and then y will be a function b of s and t. Okay? And so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to find, let's find, partial squared w partial s squared. So let's find the second partial derivative using the chain rule twice. So the first partial derivative, so by the ordinary chain rule, so by the ordinary chain rule, we can use our tree just to make sure we're on the right page. So there's w which depends on x and y. x and y depend on s and t. So in this simple case we can follow the path very easily. By the chain rule we have partial w partial s is going to be partial w, partial x, and then partial x, partial s, and then partial w, partial y, and then partial y, partial s. Okay? Now it's important to remember here that this partial w, partial x is still a function of what? This is still a function of x and y, and therefore it's a function of s and t, right? So that's an important thing to realize. And the same thing is true about this function over here, where this thing over here is just a watch. That's just a function of s and t. Well, the same thing with this thing over here. So this thing over here is also what? A function. This is a function of s and x and y and s and t. Function of s and t. Okay? So that means when we do the second derivative, we're going to have to use the product rule, because this over here is also a function of s. So let's do it. So now, partial squared, partial squared, w, partial s squared. Let's write it out very carefully. It's going to be the s derivative of this first term over here. It's going to be the s derivative of partial w, partial x, partial x, partial s. And it's going to be the s derivative of this term over here, partial w, partial y, partial y, partial s. Now let's do the product rule. So the product rule tells me what? It tells me it's going to be the first function, partial w, partial x, times the derivative of the second function, that'll be partial squared x, partial s squared, because that's just a function of s. Then it's going to be the second function, partial x, partial s, times the derivative with respect to s, and we're going to leave this temporarily like this, of the first function, partial w, partial x. And then over here we're going to have a what? First function, partial w, partial y times the derivative of the second function with respect to s, that's partial squared y, partial s squared, and then plus partial y, partial s, the second function, times the s derivative of what? The s derivative of the first function, partial w, partial y. Now in both these terms over here, recall that these things are doing the s derivative of a function of x and y, and x and y depend on s and t, so I'm going to need to do the chain rule over here, I'm going to do the chain rule, it's going to be necessary over here, and likewise over here I'm going to need to use the what? I'm going to need to use the chain rule over here, the chain rule over here as well, okay? So let's do so, so what we get, we're going to get partial uh, w partial x, that's a good term, and then partial squared x partial s squared, that's this term over here, and I'm going to put this term over here too. Those are the first order terms with respect to w, partial w, partial y, and then partial squared y, partial squared y, partial s squared. Okay? And then over here, I'm going to have a plus partial x, partial s. And now let's do the chain rule. So it's going to be what? How do I do an s derivative of this? I do the x derivative of this expression. So that's going to be partial squared w, partial x squared, and then the partial x, partial s. And then the y derivative of this thing, partial squared w, partial y, partial x, and then dy, ds. Okay? And then I do the chain rule over here, so that's going to be what? It's going to be partial y, partial s. And then by the chain rule, I have to do the x derivative of this thing, so it's going to be partial squared w, partial x, partial y, partial y, and then a partial x, partial s plus partial squared w, partial the y derivative of this thing, that's, enough, that's the second y derivative, times partial y, partial s. And so we can notice one final thing over here. What we can do is we can write this as partial w, partial x, partial w, partial x, partial squared x, partial s squared, and then plus partial w, partial y, 
partial squared y, partial s squared, and then we're gonna have what? The second x derivative, we'll have a partial squared w, partial x squared, times partial x, partial x quantity squared. That's a quantity squared, not a second derivative. And then over here, this term over here, and this term over here are exactly the same by the equality of mixed partials, so I'm gonna have two of those things. I'm gonna have two partial squared w, partial x, partial y, partial x, partial s, partial y, partial s. And then we'll have what? The final terms are gonna be what? Partial squared w, partial y squared, from these terms over here, and then a quantity, partial y, partial s, quantity squared. And so this expression over here represents, this whole expression represents the second derivative of w with respect to s. So care needs to be taken to make sure you use the product rule and the chain rule in the appropriate spots, bearing in mind that the partial derivatives of a function w with respect to x and y are themselves still functions of x and y, so the chain rule needs to be applied iteratively. Thank you very much.